Hello and welcome. So today we are going to speak about uh, how to do the configuration of the NAT rules. In order to do NAT, we need first to have a, a, a very fast overview about the different types of NATs, uh, network address translation that is supported on Storm Sheet. So we'll start with the different NAT scenarios. So this is the first scenario, which is the most common where you have in your uh, internal network, you have like your internal subnet as here, like 192.168.0.0/24, and you have a public IP. So we all know, of course, it's not supposed for the private network to go to the internet. So normally we use the network address translation to translate all this subnet when it's going to the internet to go by the IP address, which is the public IP assigned to us by the ISP, for example. And so we will be doing a translation for uh, in, in this scenario. So you will have connections coming from this subnet, whatever the IP, the private IP is. Whenever it goes to the firewall, when the destination is going out to the internet, let's say, at that moment, the firewall will change the IP to become the public IP of the firewall. So all the connections that are going from my internal network to the internet, for example, they will be going by one public IP that I have assigned to my network. So this is how it looks like. So my internet network going to the internet. This is the kind of rule in, in simple words uh, that we are using for, for that. And of course, we call it the dynamic translation. In the dynamic translation, we don't only uh, translate the source IP, but we also translate the source port. And in the next slides, we will explain more in details. This is just the simple idea. Whenever I have to do a network address translation for my internal network, when it goes to the internet using one public IP that I have assigned on my external uh, interface, let's say firewall out, in that case, we are going to use dynamic translation. The second example we have is when I have internally in my network, let's say a web server, so let's assume I have this IP 192.168.0.100 on port 80, and I have a public IP. Now, in this scenario, I need to publish my web server to the internet. Of course, I cannot publish the private IP, so I need to use my public IP to publish the service. So, in this case, the connections, when they will be coming, they will be coming from internet to my public IP, which is, for example, on my firewall out interface. So, an out interface, so you will find object called firewall underscore out that represents your public IP on the firewall out in this scenario. It could be different, of course and uh, the connection will be coming to port 80. So I will see the connection is coming from internet, whatever the public IP is coming from, to destination my external public IP on port 80. What I need to do in this scenario is to do a simple redirect, sorry, simple redirect for this connection. And instead of it's going to the firewall out, I need it to go to the uh, private IP. So here I will do the translation for the destination IP. Instead of it's the public IP, it will become the private IP. And in this case, we call it a simple NAT by port, or also could be uh, called a redirect. So we are doing a redirect per port. So in the third scenario, I have one extra public IP, and uh, uh, and even even more. My ISP has assigned me uh, extra public IPs. I'm using one for my firewall out. Maybe I'm using the second one as a, my gateway. So then I have extra public IPs and I want to utilize this extra public IP for special services. Maybe for a service that is not running on TCP UDP. So I need just to do a translation per IP, not per port. And maybe I have, uh, I want to assign one public IP for my mail server, another public IP for my web server. So I want to use uh, other public IP than the one assigned for my firewall. I want to use it to publish an internal host or internal service. In this scenario, I will have the connection coming from the internet to my, uh, let's say, other public IP. I'm calling it public IP2, for example. This is what we call the virtual IP. Now, this virtual IP is not on any interface. So it's just an IP that I know it belongs to me. My SP knows how to route this, uh, any traffic coming to this IP, they know how to uh, route it to my uh, network. Now, I'm receiving any kind of connection to my public IP to, let's say, on port 80. What I need to do is to be able to uh, redirect this traffic. Whenever anything coming to this public IP, I need to send it to this private IP. Now, in this case, not necessarily to, be, to stick to a specific port. 
so it could be only pair IP that's the, the good point about it so in this case we, we can just say without a port so it's just simply an, an IP to IP and at the same time now when this connection is coming to this IP now this IP needs to reply back so instead of allowing the reply to go directly so when it goes directly without uh, respecting this without creating any kind of NAT rule that uh, translate the, the response it will go by the public IP one, which will cause us a problem. So you are sending a connection uh, to to one IP, and you are receiving the connection from another IP. So in that case, we need to make sure also the response also comes back from the same IP to go translated by the same public IP that we receive the connection. So we need to do uh, bidirectional map, two ways of of of, of natting, and uh, we we call this scenario let's say a static translation or by map or one-to-one, -one, whatever whatever the name. So to go uh, in further details, this is the dynamic translation. So dynamic translation, we're going back to the first type. We need to translate a private network through a one public IP address. I have my computer or internal network. I'm calling them as a private A. And the firewall has a public IP, which is public firewall underscore FW. And here I'm doing the translation. So I have on the internet a web server that is uh, has a public IP uh, at web. So let's see how the connection is going. So the original packet that goes from my internal network, it will, it will be any private IP from my internal network with any source port randomly generated by uh, my operating system that I'm using in this machine. The destination will be, of course, it will be mounting to uh, pointing to the web public IP and since it's a web it will be on port 80 when we need to do the translation we cannot allow the private IP to go to the internet so we need to change this and also we don't allow to go with this the original source port as it was assigned by the operating system for many reasons this uh, could be uh, a problem a security problem because uh, uh, some hackers could fingerprint what type of operating system you are using by just referring to the source port also there, there is a chance to have some kind of conflict two machines could be generating the same source port and this will could will cause uh, some kind of conflict so instead of that the firewall will just change the source IP of the private uh, host into a public IP and also it will uh, change the source port into another source port recorded by the firewall itself. So the firewall will have now an, an, a NAT table. In this NAT net table, it will record that this private IP was coming from this source uh, port, was going to this destination on this port, and the translation was done on this public IP, and, and so forth. So you will see here, this is the table, okay, that is stored. Private IP with the source port uh, was translated through public IP with the source port. So this is how the translation is done. Now, when the response coming back, normally this file, this uh, web server, it it see it saw the connection coming from the public IP. It it doesn't know anything about the private, so it will reply back to the public IP. So the source will become in the response uh, from public web. Source port will will become 80 because it was the destination in the request. So the response it will become the source. Destination will be the public IP of the firewall, and destination port will be uh, the original source port that it has received. And then the firewall will do the translation according to the table, so it know the, the firewall, that this uh, source port with the public IP of the firewall was uh, translated from this private IP and this source port, so it will just do a translation in this case uh, in, in, the, in the reverse way. So this is just, just a, a simple view how the dynamic NAT is, is working. So at the end, when you have a network, so each IP will be going through one public IP, but the source port will be different. That's why we have a need to do not only NAT, but also we need to do PAT. So port address translation and network address translation. And the firewall will maintain a table of all the open connection and all the open uh, translated connections uh, as it is and it records the source port with its uh, original uh, private IP and as you can see internally we have here the private IP A has a source port 1232 and have another machine which is private IP C 
that has also coming from the same uh, port but with, when it was translated it was going with a different range that was assigned by the firewall we call it the ephemeral underscore firewall range static translation by port in this case as we said uh, earlier I have an internal web server okay or any server that runs any kind of service so the connection will be coming from a public uh, client from the internet they are trying to access my private web server now they don't know my private IP they only know my public IP so the connection will be coming from uh, sorry yeah so the connection will be coming from the public IP of the client from its original source port and the destination will be my uh, public IP of the firewall on port 80 so this is how the connection will come so now the firewall needs to do what needs to translate the connection the source will remain the same but the destination it needs to change it instead of it was going to the uh, public IP of the firewall it needs to be translated into the private IP of the firewall of course we have the ability to also change the port if the internal web server is on a different port but that's a different story and then when the uh, reply is going back so it will go by the private IP as a source and to the client IP as a destination of course the destination port will be the original source port that it was when it goes through the firewall again the firewall will not uh, let the connection go by the private IP it needs to go by the public IP so this is how it goes and then you will start to see that uh, you can publish multiple services on the same public IP so each service can be published by a specific port I have a mail server I have a web server so I can create a route for the web server on port 80 I can create another rule for the mail server on port 25 and it will be all stored and managed so the clients can access but for them they will be thinking that they are accessing this public IP in fact the firewall based on the connection destination port it knows to which server it needs to do the translation and send the connection accordingly last type as we mentioned is the static translation in the static translation I have an IP from my from ISP but ISP also provided me with an extra public IP in this case I have the public firewall which is the IP assigned to my firewall and also I have a public mail which is another public IP and I'm using it for my mail server now in this case I have a mail server over the internet it's whatever something on the internet and I have my private mail server inside what I need to do is that I need for my domain name I have for example that is registered un under the public IP uh, of, of this mail it's it's not anywhere it's not on my out interface it's not on any interface it is just an, an extra public IP I have so I need to create an ad rule that allows me to publish this public IP and connect it with my private IP in this scenario since it's, it's different we need to create a bi-directional map so one rule to say anything is going to my public IP of the mail let it go to my private IP of the mail and anything coming from my private IP of the mail let it go to the public IP of the mail through it as, as a, another source so here how it goes uh, this is the original packet coming from internet from whatever source port destination it will be going to public mail and the destination port will be 25 so in this case connection coming to my public mail which is nothing configured not on any interface but it is pu published only through uh, an ad rule then this uh, packet will be translated to uh, go to the private uh, IP of my mail server and then when the reply back I need to translate my uh, private IP when it goes out through my public mail not through my firewall out so in this two rules that are created anything that is going to my extra public IP I have I'm calling it public mail it goes to my private IP of the mail anything comes uh, from my private mail when it's going to the internet I let it go through a public IP the extra one that I have I know it's uh, it sounds complicated it's not uh, when you see the rules it will make more sense to you in this scenario so I have uh, I can not only rely on a specific port maybe I have my internal server and it has multiple services or maybe a non TCP UDP service and in this case I need to do a, 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 a let's say a translation based on IP not based on whatever the service that is uh, on top of it 
So I can create a rule saying that anything that comes to public IP, an extra one, not the one I'm using on my parallel out, just to remind, it's one extra IP that I have. Anything coming to this extra IP, I will send it to this private IP. Anything comes from this private IP, I will send it to the, through this public IP, regardless of the port or the service or the protocol that is being used. Uh, uh, that it could be, for example, uh, VPN, it could be uh, TCP UDP, it could be ICMP, it could be at whatever. So I'm doing a translation per IP, regardless of the source and destination port, because it's not necessarily to be a TCP UDP service in this scenario. One more important point we need to, to highlight is that we have mentioned a couple of times that the extra IP, when you want to publish an extra IP that you don't have it assigned on any of your interfaces on the firewall, that means it is uh, not connected to any MAC address. It's not connected to any interface. So in this case, since we know that the communication only goes at the MAC level without, without a MAC address, there's no possible to have any kind of communications. So the first thing we need to do after we create the rule is to know how to publish a MAC address for this public IP. And definitely we will be using the MAC address that for the interface which has the IP from the same subnet or the, the original interface that has the public IP. So I have one extra public IP. I have the original IP. The first one is assigned on my firewall out, let's say for example. So in this case, I need to also publish the extra IP on this interface. We all know that also we have a protocol, the address resolution protocol which uh, sends a request uh, whenever I have a connection for uh, an IP. So it needs first to send an ARP request to get the MAC address of this IP so then the packet can be uh, created and then the connection can be established. So I have a connection coming from the internet, from a public IP client to my public IP, the extra one for my mail. So what will happen is that it has the source MAC address of this the last uh, router before reaching the firewall is there. But the destination is not it's not there. So in this case, it will send an ARP uh, broadcast, which has a request asking for the MAC address of uh, the public IP mail who has this IP. And then the firewall, once we create uh, the R publication rule, it's just a simple checkbox. We will see it. Uh, uh, we are uh, going to co to publish the IPs, the extra public IPs that we have on the uh, interface that we have. So I have two public IPs, I can uh, choose our publication for both of them and then so the firewall in this case, when this is configured, will send a response informing the uh, machine about, uh, informing sorry, the uh, router about the uh, MAC address of this public IP. So then it can easily establish the connection.